Is the fear that low response rates to your agency's cold emails the reason you feel you're stuck in a bit of a sales slump? Because I'm about to show you how you can craft cold emails better than 99% of your competitors by the time you're done watching this video. And I'm going to show you how to write them quickly using some awesome formulas along with the help of AI. More opens, more clicks, more replies, more conversions, more revenue for your agency. The best part is what I'm going to show you doesn't require reinventing the wheel or making massive changes to your outreach process. They're simple methods being used by the world's top sellers to capture prospects' attention. But what are 99% of agencies doing right now to make prospects want to delete their cold emails? And what are the 1% of successful agencies doing to get replies? The difference actually isn't that much. But the best way to explain it is by getting you to think about cake. Okay, bear with me. You know when you go to the supermarket and you see the cakes in the supermarket bakery? They look fine. Nothing wrong with them, except they're very generic. The person who made them is clearly very skilled. But you contrast that to the professional patisserie in town and the way they make cakes. Compared to that generic version, they're putting in just a little bit more, a little more effort, a little more finesse on every level to make their product stand out. Now, the contents of the cake are much the same, the colors, the icing, the textures, the personalization with your name, and maybe they even have it in your favorite shape. It really helps set their product apart, right? And that there, my friends, is exactly how a prospect views cold emails that come across their inbox. You see, there's nothing wrong with the store-bought version, but that's what most agencies are sending. And your prospects, they're getting dozens, if not hundreds of these every single day. So what's naturally going to stand out when they connect their eyes to the content of the email? The generic one that looks like it was made for every lead, or the one where there was that little more effort, that little more finesse, and that little more personalization. And that's what I'm gonna go through right now. Easy to follow formulas that when combined with AI will make your agency's cold emails pop while your competitors' messages drown in a sea of mediocrity. I've packaged a bunch of these formulas along with real life examples of how they've been used. So head to the description and click the link. They're super easy to follow along. The formulas you'll see are cold emails that have achieved actual opens, actual clicks, and conversions. And stay tuned because I'm gonna tailor just a few of these examples and formulas for you as an agency. Now, if we go back to the cake example, there's quite a few underlying psychological things happening, right? Those really pro bakers, what are they doing to set themselves apart? They're using a lot of different tricks that make you go, ah, wow. The different colors, textures, creativity, presentation style, right down to the packaging of the box. Now, I'm not suggesting for a second you use different colors in cold emails, and I'm not suggesting for a second that you send cakes to your prospects, although that could be quite a novel idea. But you as an agency want to use different principles of persuasion and influence in your copywriting to draw readers into your cold emails. So back to the formulas that you've hopefully downloaded, you'll see 10 examples. I won't go through 10, but I'll do two in detail in today's video and show you how to calibrate these for your agency with the help of AI. Let's start with the before after bridge formula or BAB. And what you're doing here is painting a stark contrast in your cold email. So first you depict the before scenario, illustrating the prospect's current world with their biggest pain point or pain points. You then help the prospect imagine the after, how much easier would their life be if their problem was removed? And the bridge is what you're pitching to help them get across that gap. The BAB technique engages recipients emotionally because they're very likely aware of this pain point and you're hitting it and presenting a solution to help them solve it. Now that's the formula and now I'm gonna go through and apply it in practice with the help of ChatGPT. So why don't we give it a whirl? Okay, so I found this local electrician online. It's based in Salt Lake City and it's got less than four stars. Now that doesn't mean it's a bad business, it's just got very few reviews. And typically prospects like this don't know how to ask for reviews. They likely care about their ratings, but they're just too busy. I think this lead is a good fit for my agency's reputation management service, and I'm pretty confident I could help this business owner get more reviews and boost their rating to above four stars. So this is what I'm gonna punch into ChatGPT. So I'm typing up the situation here. I'm an agency owner that specializes in helping local businesses improve their online reputation. I'm writing a cold email to a prospect that has a 3.5 star rating and less than 10 reviews. 
and I want to explain that I've successfully helped many businesses go from less than four to more than four stars and 50 reviews in just three months, which typically helps them rank number one or two on local search and boost their revenue by 10% on average because they're getting more leads. So I've given ChatGPT the context and the situation, now I'm gonna give it the ask. So I wanted to, based on this information, create a three to four line email to the prospect. I wanted to include a very short link and reference to a personalized sales intelligence report that I've created, which shows that this prospect uh, is being outranked by its competitors on local search. The CTA is to encourage them to have a five minute call with me. The email should be written in a way that a reasonable person would talk. I don't want it to sound robotic. And I've included in the prompt that the email should incorporate the before after bridge technique where it shows the prospects the before, here's your world now, after, imagine your world if we took away this problem, and the bridge, here's how to get here. Okay, so let's have a look at the copy that ChatGPT produced for us for our cold email. So the subject line reads, boost your online presence and revenue in three months. Hey, prospect's name, and then we go into the before. Your current rating stands at 3.5 stars with less than 10 reviews, hindering your local search ranking and lead generation potential. This continues with dive into your personalized report, highlighting how competitors are outshining you. The after reads, imagine achieving a solid four-star rating with 50 plus reviews in three months, skyrocketing to number one or two in local search results and increasing revenue by 10%. And the bridge is, Let's chat to discuss how we can replicate the success for your business, best, your name, and we're gonna include the signature. Now, I like this cold email. I honed this prompt, so this is about 90% of what I wanted to get to. So now we need to apply our own critical thinking, our creativity, and be like that baker who wants to take their cake to the next level. So this is how I would edit um, this cold email that was produced from ChatGPT. So I've changed up the subject line to, I'll get you a four star Google rating in 90 days with a rocket ship emoji. Now we've included an emoji in a B2B email and your natural tendency might not be to do that. But research actually shows that the use of emojis can increase open rates by 21%. There's a whole bank of research on this and there's a thought leader in the industry. His name is Jay Schwedelson. You can find him on LinkedIn and his agency does a lot of research on both B2B and B2C emojis. So they can work when used in the right way. And my personal tip is to make sure you align or make the uh, emoji that you choose relevant to the contents of the subject line. So in this instance, I'll get you a four-star Google rating in 90 days. Uh, we're kind of visualizing here that your rating and the amount of reviews is gonna go higher. And so a rocket ship emoji makes sense, but you could also use a star emoji. Use your own personal judgment. So I've made a direct uh, promise to the prospect and hopefully that's, that helps this email get more noticed. My greeting is, hi, Derek. I feel hi is more formal than hey. I rewrote the before line like this. I noticed Hidden Peak Electric's current Google rating is 3.5 stars with limited reviews. And this is affecting how many people can find your business online. So a couple of things here, I've made it more personalized. You see, I've mentioned the prospect's name and I've humanized the language around, hey, this is actually affecting how many people can find you online, okay? So we, we because we don't want to be sounding robotic, even though ChatGPT helped us produce some of this content. I've continued on to make the email flow better. And I've said, here's a personalized report showing how you rank versus other Salt Lake electricians. Again, personalized, right? Um, I want the prospect to feel that this isn't just some generic email that is being sent to everyone. That's why I've specifically mentioned Salt Lake and electrician so that when Derek reads it, they go, oh, th this guy understands I'm in this city. I'm competing with other electricians. This feels personalized um, uh, and targeted to me. Then we go into the after and I've changed it up like this. I can get you four stars with 50 reviews in just three months. Just a very, very clear promise. My clients typically increase revenue by 10% as I help them get to rank one or two on local search. So I'm explaining more about how, how this happens. And with the bridge, I've ended it with, I'd love to share the strategy I have in mind to boost your rating if you have five minutes. I always want my ask or CTA to feel very low commitment. So I've given the prospect a specific time frame in terms of how, how long I want to talk to them, five minutes. And you know, hopefully if the prospect does want to speak to me, um, we can extend that call or go into more detail if they're interested in uh, the strategy. And I've positioned it as a strategy that rather than, I'd love to sell you my reputation management service if you have five minutes. I wanna actually talk to them about the thing I have in mind unique for their business. 
And with the signature, I've kept things really simple. I've just got my name, I've got my phone number, I've got a calendar link, and I've got an, a one-click unsubscribe button there as well. We want to have that because of Gmail's changes earlier this year. So I've shown the before world or where they are now, low ratings, low review volumes, and poor search rankings. I've shown them the world after, a 10% boost to revenue and much higher visibility on search. And I've provided the bridge, which is to speak to me. And again, going back to the cake, I've added that little bit of extra value with that free personalized report and just sharpened up the language that we originally got from AI. So it's very brief and to the point, I'm super happy with this and I would 100% send this email to the prospect. But if you as an agency wanna target this lead, be my guest. <laughs> Now let's go into the next formula, and I really like this one, star chain hook. And the idea is this, the star is your attention grabbing headline or main idea that you present in your cold email, and it needs to feel relatively big. The chain is supporting evidence, facts, or benefits that reinforce the main idea. This could include statistics, case studies, or examples of past successes. And the hook is a clear and compelling call to action prompting the recipient to take that next step. And I like the idea of something like a free trial for this. So in essence, what you're doing is presenting a compelling idea, backing it up with some evidence and prompting action in a succinct manner. So let's think of a situation that could work for this. And I'm thinking beauty companies. So the one thing I know from conversations with beauty services companies is that they get way too many calls each day and they have trouble converting leads. They have situations where they get five, six, seven people ringing at any one time, but they've only got one admin person or one receptionist. So all these other calls get missed. And that means missed opportunities. So let's go ahead and try and pique their interest in my AI lead capture chatbot to this beauty clinic in Oregon here and get ChatGPT to help build our email. So I did my research on this clinic and they seem like a pretty good prospect. They've got no chatbot, they've got no appointment scheduling tool, and there's a lot of information on it. And I think visitors would want a chatbot to help them sort through that information quickly. Beauty services companies, they offer so many products, so many different prices for different things. It's kind of hard for a visitor to find that information. And these beauty clinics, they don't want those constant calls where people are just asking for general pricing information, right? So here's what I'm gonna plug into ChatGPT. I've explained the situation. So I'm an agency owner that offers an AI assisted lead capture chatbot. This tool is designed to solve a common pain point among local businesses, generating more leads while reducing generic inbound calls and queries. After I implemented this tool for a foot clinic, I generated 27 leads in three days and cut general inbound queries by 30 calls because the bot was answering so many customer questions. And this is a real case study I'm including. I want to offer this to a prospect and position the chatbot as a solution to help improve their lead generation and cut admin time. So now we go into the ask. Based on this information, create a three to four line cold email to the prospect. Include a very short link in reference to a case study about the foot clinic. I helped with the chatbot tool. The CTA is to encourage them to take a 30 day free trial by following the link. And the email, again, should be written in a way that a reasonable person would talk. I asked ChatGPT to use the star chain hook technique, which is to present the star, so the big idea, the chain, a series of facts, sources, reasons, and benefits, and the hook is the call to action. So let's throw this into ChatGPT and see what it produces. And here's the copy it made. Subject, elevate your lead generation efforts with AI chatbot Rocketship. Um, hey, prospect's name. So we go into the star. Imagine boosting your lead generation while slashing admin time. The chain is just like how I helped a foot clinic generate 27 leads in three days and reduced inbound queries by 30 calls using our AI chatbot tool. Check out the case study for more details. And the hook is ready to experience the difference. Try our AI chatbot with a 30 day free trial. Click here to get started. Looking forward to helping you revolutionize your lead capture process. So ChatGPT really is getting better, and this one is nearly on the mark. But again, really important that we use an AI-assisted and human-edited strategy here. And the only thing I really want changed is the subject line and the star part of the email to really hit home when the prospect reads it. So this is what I've changed the subject line to. Harness AI for more quality leads plus fewer calls. 
Now, the reason I've changed it like this is because if you look at the subject line in the previous email, AI was in the very end and everyone's talking about AI. So this is what we call front loading your keyword. And I've put it at the very front. I want the prospect to notice it um, as the first thing they see when they get the email in their inbox. And I've made, um, uh, I've pointed out two things that matter to their business, more quality leads and fewer calls. So I think this subject line is a pretty noticeable one. So I've changed the greeting to Hi Dan. Now I've changed up the star like this. Imagine attracting more quality leads 24 seven while reducing the time the Leonard MediSpa team spends answering generic queries. Now I've made it longer compared to the example or the, the copy that ChatGPT gave me. Now a shorter email isn't necessarily the best if it isn't gonna convey um, the right idea or the right message, right? So I've added some more personalization and made this more specific. I want them to know that they'll be generating quality leads 24 seven. That's the um, big star here, if you will. And I wanna also show the prospect that I'm stepping into their, into their shoes, excuse me. So reducing the time the Leonard MediSpa team spends answering generic queries. I, I want them to show that I understand that, you know, business owners don't like it when all their receptionists are just answering all these general queries. They want appointments booked, okay? And that's the reason I've changed the language up to be more specific. Then we go into the chain and I felt that ChatGPT did a really good job of the chain. So I've left that, I'm pretty happy with it. And all I've changed in the hook is ready to achieve true efficiency. Okay, ready to achieve true efficiency rather than uh, ready to experience the difference. I feel, you know, efficiency is a stronger keyword here. So that's all I've changed. And try our AI chatbot with a 30 day free trial. Click here to get started. And that remains the same as what ChatGPT spat out. And again, I've updated the signature. Make sure you include your name. For me, I prefer putting my cell number, um, the calendar link, and of, of course, the one-click unsubscribe button. Okay, so I'm really happy with this cold email now. I presented the AI chatbot as a star. I mentioned uh, that they can get leads 24 seven, and I did it in a way where I called out the common challenge that these beauty businesses face. I included a chain of facts and figures to show not only the new business that the Foot Clinic obtained, but the time they saved, along with a link to a case study. And I added a clear CTA around getting them to click on my 30 day free trial link. So those are two of the 10 formulas we applied in practice. And I hope I did a good job in explaining the rationale behind those formulas and how they can be applied in practice with the help of AI. If you want me to cover the other formulas in a similar level of detail, why not drop a comment below and mention which ones you want me to cover or other cold email tactics that you'd like me to discuss. And I just wanna point out one really important thing here. What we're doing today goes a bit beyond the basics when it comes to cold email tactics. And there's so much more to think about when we craft these cold emails beyond the mere writing. So for example, how did I identify or know about the pain points for these local businesses? How did I find the prospects? What's the rationale behind the subject lines and the email length that I opted for? When should I send these emails? how and how often would I follow up? All these questions are addressed in the other video we've published where I delve into the ultimate 2024 cold email blueprint for agencies. So please make sure you check that out as it's a core foundational piece of content for your agency. In that video, I cover the essential basics of writing cold emails, where emails fit into your overall outreach strategy, the best times to send your emails and what an awesome outreach cadence looks like. The link in that video includes actual foundational templates, whereas what I've given you here are advanced formulas. And there you have it. I assure you that if you follow the advice in this video, you'll be writing emails better than 99% of agencies. So what's next? Please print out or bookmark those formulas and start by applying one or two that resonate with you. Practice makes perfect, so take a few runs at writing them and testing them on different prospects. Use AI to help you get a start in the copy. Undergoing this exercise will help you get so much better at prompting, but don't forget to use your own personal finesse and creativity to round out these emails. Once you've finessed out the ideal email for each formula, why not save it as a template? And you can use that to scale your cold email outreach. If you have any success stories based on the formulas that you've learned from me and this channel, please let me know in the comments. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you and your agency succeed. And on that note, happy cold emailing.